Okay, now we're going to go to what is uh, an attorney, the definition and the etymology of the word uh, to find out what's really going on. Um, so here is the etymology online dictionary. So first I'll read attorney. Okay, early 14th century Anglo-Latin from Old French, a tournée. One appointed, past participle of a turner to decree, assign, or appoint from a turner, see, a turn. The legal Latin form, a turner, influenced the spelling of Anglo-French. The sense is of one appointed to represent another's interests. So basically, well, I'll read the rest. In English law, a private attorney was one appointed to act for another in business or legal affairs, usually for pay. Yeah always for pay. An attorney at law or public attorney was a qualified legal agent in the courts of common law who prepared the cases for a barrister who pleaded them, the equivalent of a solicitor in chancery. So much a term of contempt in England that it was abolished by the Judicature Act of 1873 and merged with solicitor. Johnson, here's an example of how it's used. Johnson observed that he did not care to speak ill of any man behind his back, but he believed the gentleman was an attorney. Uh, the double T is mistaken. 15th century attempt to restore a non-existent Latin original. Attorney General first appeared, first recorded 1530s in sense of legal officer of the state. Uh, late 13th century in Anglo-French, from French, hence the odd plural subject first, adjective second. Um, so in this sense, an attorney is basically one who uh, is appointed to represent another's interests. So when you defer your power, you are turning yourself over to that person to represent you. And what you want to do is present yourself. You don't want anyone to represent you. Because if you're having someone, if you're deferring your power, then you're acting as an infant. You're, uh, you can't, you're telling the courts and everybody and the lawyer, lawyers that you're incapable of, you're, you're incapable of handling your own affairs. You're not sovereign. That's basically what you're saying. So now let's go to definition of a turn, where attorney comes from. Late 13th century Anglo-French, to turn over to another. The action of turning one over to another. From Old French, a tourner, to turn, to turn to, assign, attribute, dispose. To turn, in feudal law, here it is, to transfer homage or allegiance to another lord. So basically, um, law stems from ecclesiastical law. So it is highly tied into the Bible, the scriptures, what's written there, the knowledge, and to uh, your your freedom, your sovereignty. Because basically, um, you're transferring homage or allegiance to Satan. <laughs> I know it sounds weird and crazy, but Satan is your adversary. Um, and you're 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 leaving relativity, what's real, what's true, and you're going over into the satanic world of legalese, which is legal fictions, which don't really exist, like borders and stuff like that. Um, you're uh, if you hire an attorney, and this is all written. I'm just explaining this in my own words. This is all written in their legal language. Um, you're transferring homage to that other Lord. What you want to do is stay under God. You want to stay under the real power, the real relativity, what's real. You don't want to turn yourself over to any other human um, or any other man to make your rules or your laws. Uh, and that's where... If you stay, if you're staying under God, that's where you turn within, because the only the kingdom is within you. Uh, I know a lot of Christians don't want to accept 
going within and that God is within you and that sort of thing. But you can have both. You can have God as God being without, you know, overseeing all because God is everything. But God is also you in that you go within to, to speak to God. So you're acting as God. It's, it's a very hard thing to put into words, but if you defer your power, God's power, to an attorney or to any other man, you're a slave. All right, let's keep going while I'm on a roll. I'm going to bring up definition of Satan here. Satan, proper name of the supreme evil spirit in Christianity. Now, keep in mind, this is just, that's, that's not what it really is. That's what people, it's saying what people believe it is, but, you know, um, that's just what people have conjured in their head, uh, a supreme evil spirit, old English Satan from late Latin. But we're dealing with the what the actual word means when the people who wrote it, what the word means. Not what, not what Christians have in their head what it is, you know, like a red devil guy in a suit or a demon or whatever. This is what the word means. The translation of the word, word. From late Latin, Satan, in Vulgate, in Old Testament only. From Greek, okay, it's from the Greek word Satanus, from, uh, which is from Hebrew, Satan. And it means adversary, one who plots against another. Sorry, but that's a friggin' lawyer, Okay. <laughs> Or it's anyone, could be anyone, even your mother, who who sells you out to the state or another lord or any anyone who wants to hurt you. From Satan, to show enmity to, oppose, or plot against. Okay? From the root, and it's when they, from the root when they didn't use uh, consonants, S-T-N. One who opposes, obstructs, or acts as an adversary. And here's an example. If you stop paying your taxes, you're going to find out who Satan is. Your adversary is going to come and try to put you in jail. They're going to try to bring you into their court of ball, try to lord over you and say, hey, it's our rule that you have to pay this tax to Caesar. And if you say, no, what? who says I have to? They're going to act as uh, your opposer, your adversary, and they're going to try to put you in a cage. It's very simple. In Septuagint Greek, usually translated as diablos, slanderer, literally one who throws something across the path of another, devil, through epibulos, plotter, is, once, is used once. In biblical sources, the Hebrew term, the Satan, describes an adversarial role. It is not the name of a particular character, although Hebrew storytellers as early as the 6th century BCE occasionally introduced a supernatural character whom they called the Satan. What they meant was any one of the angels sent by God for the specific purpose of blocking or obstructing human activity, the origin of Satan. So, uh, again, angel, the word angel just means messenger, it just means someone sent for the purpose of blocking human activity. Now, if the state sends a cop or a bailiff or whatever to come and arrest you because you didn't pay your taxes or renew your TV license in Britain or whatever other stupid thing they lord over you, aren't they sending a messenger to come and obstruct you? Isn't Satan, the state, or whoever sent them, Sending an angel, that cop or whoever, to come and give you the message, by the way, you know, you need to come into court because we're going to put you in jail. I mean, I know this is a whole different way of looking and seeing things, but I think people need to start looking at the reality of situations and get out of the mysticism that the priests and elders and church leaders have been indoctrinating people with. I mean, what... Why do you think they do that? How how do you how are you supposed to fight some imaginary demonic devil costume thing red thing with red horns and a tail? You can't fight that. There's no there's no 
you can't do anything about it. But if you realize what I'm saying here and you know exactly what's going on, you can stand up against the state, which is resurrection, by the way. Resurrection means to stand up again. Right? You can stand up and say, no, get thee behind me, Satan, just like Jesus did. So that's why they're doing all the, that's why they're putting all that uh, crap out there about Satan is demonic, blah, blah, I don't know what. It's just, doesn't make any sense to me, but, or it didn't until I learned this. And that's why I'm making these videos, because now, now I see it. I totally understand what's going on. <sighs> okay. Next. Oh, let's look at Lucifer, because it's. Oh, I wish this would stop doing that. Okay. Lucifer, Old English Lucifer, Satan, also morning star. From Latin Lucifer, morning star, literally light bringing. From Lux, Lucis, Lucius, light, see light, fair, carry, to infer. Belief that it was the proper name of Satan began with its use in Bible to translate Greek phosphorus. So here again with the misunderstandings in the, I think, intentional, deliberate translating to deceive people. Um, it was to translate the Greek phosphorus, which translates Hebrew, Hillel ben Shahar in Isaiah, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Because of the mention of a fall from heaven, the verse was interpreted by Christians as a reference to Satan, even though it's literally a refer reference to the king of Babylon. So Lucifer was a king. Those that have the light, probably the law or the special knowledge that they like to keep from everyone else. I think that might be what the light is. I don't know. Lucifer match, friction match, is from blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Devil. Devil, false god. So evil spirit, a devil, the devil, false god, diabolical person. I wanted to look up... Um, Heaven. Let's see what heaven has to say. Okay. Heaven. Old English. Hefan. Home of God. So that's not. That's earlier. Sky or firmament. Firm, firmament. Probably from Proto Germanic. Dissimilated from Himen, cognates Low German Heben, Old Norse Himen, Gothic Himenis, Himens, Old Frisian Himmel, Dutch Hemel, German Himmel, Heaven or Sky. Perhaps a pie root chem to cover. Now that reminds me of there's old Egyptian things where it says Isis and. Horus and Isis, one was the covering of the other. It's the same thing. It's the same old myths packaged in different ways. Also propo proposed as the source of chemise. What? Does that mean shirt in French? Watkins de derives it elaborately from pie, sharp stone, sharp stone, stony vault of heaven. Plural use in sense of sky is probably from Ptolemic theory of space composed of many spheres, but it also formally was used in the same sense as the singular in biblical language as a translation of Hebrew, plural, shamayin, heaven sent, heavens, realm of the heavenly bodies. It's just talking about the sky and space, or home of God, I don't know. Anyway, just wanted to look that up. Back to the law. Yet the saddest and most insidious, insidious fact about the legal racket is that the general public doesn't realize it's a racket either. Scared, befuddled, impressed, and ignorant, they take what's fed them, or rather what is sold them. 
from the law merchant. Only once in age do the non-lawyers get not wise, but disgusted and rebel. Once in age. As Harold Lasky is fond of putting it, in every revolution the lawyers lead the way to the guillotine or the fire squad. It should not, however, require a revolution to rid society of lawyer control. A word on revolution. The word revolution means to come full circle back to the starting point. So we don't want a revolution. We don't want... That's what's been happening. Revolutions have been happening. Which means we people have found this out, rebelled, and then the lawyers just... Because we don't stop the lawyers, they just keep coming back and doing it all over and over and over again. So we don't want a revolution. We want an evolution past all this bullshit. Nor is riddance by revolution ever likely to be a permanent solution. There you go. <laughs> the American colonists had scarcely freed themselves from the nuisances of the law by practically ostracizing the pre-revolutionary lawyers out of their communities, a fact which is little appreciated when a new and homemade crop of lawyers sprang up to take over the affairs of the baby nation. That crop, 150 years later, is still growing in numbers and power. I think that's what happened when the the Americas got started. They they saw through all this stuff. They wanted to start it again. But then Adam Weishoff and that whole plan, right? The new the new Illuminati chapter, that's when they 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 uh that whole story there is outlining how the lawyers crept their way back in, but they did it covertly through politics and law and banking, and they usurped the whole system again. They keep doing it because they're wily. <laughs> we need to see this for what it is and stop it. What is really needed to put the lawyers in their places and out of the seats of the mighty is no more than a slashing of the veil of dignified mystery that now surrounds and protects the law. If people could be made to realize how much of the va vaunted majesty of the law is a hoax and how many of the mighty processes of the law are merely logical ledger domain, they would not long let the lawyers catch them around, lead them around by the nose. And people have recently begun bit by bit to catch on. The great illusion of the law has been leaking a little at the edges. All right. It will take some awakening to the fact that training in the law does not make lawyers wiser than other men, but only smarter. See, that's it. I think those who see through this stuff are wiser than lawyers. Lawyers may be smarter, but we're wiser. <laughs> Perhaps an examination of the lawyers and their law set down in ordinary English might help achieve these ends. That's why I'm making this video, and that's why this guy wrote this, I think. For despite what the lawyers say, it is possible to talk about legal principles and legal reasoning in everyday non-legal language. The point is that so discussed, the principles and the reasoning and the whole solemn business of the law come to look downright silly. That's how it looks to me now. Now that I see with new eyes, I see it as redonkulous. And perhaps if the ordinary men could see in black and white how silly and irrelevant and unnecessary it all is, he might be persuaded in a peaceful way to take the control of his civilization out of the hands of those modern purveyors and streamlined voodoo and chromium-plated theology, the Pharisees, the elders, the priests and elders, the lawyers. Okay. That's it for chapter one. Hope you enjoyed it.